Hey guys, so today I thought I'd make a video about one of my favorite nerd tools ever, an online mapping application called Geovic. It's an extremely valuable tool for gold prospectors and anyone with an interest in the fascinating gold mining history of Victoria. This program enables you to build your own maps, search and access detailed information, tapping into a huge range of data sources. It's accessed freely in your internet browser, so no download or application installation is required. Now the thing is, this program can be a bit daunting when you open it up for the first time. It brings up this weird interface with a whole lot of weird buttons up the top, some seemingly useless nonsense over on the left, and a whole lot of nothing showing on the map. But stick at it because it's a brilliant program filled with heaps of interesting information, and if you're anything like me, you're going to have a great time nerding out on it. So I hope that this basic tutorial will help anyone who is first opening up Geovic and is not really sure what they're looking at. To access Geovic, you visit the Geovic page on the Earth Resources website. I'll put a link in the description below. Alternatively, you can do a Google search for Geovic and it should be the first result. Geovic is best viewed on a computer, but is also accessible on a tablet and mobile, but with a few capabilities missing. Browsing Geovic on a tablet can be pretty doable, but on a mobile phone, it can become very tedious due to the smaller screen size. However, a benefit of using it on a mobile device is that you can show your current location on the map, which is great for when you're out in the area you're researching. In general though, I find that having it open on a computer screen is ideal. So let's get started. As you can see here, there's a registered version and an anonymous version of Geovic. It's free to sign up for an account and you'll have access to all their online data and program functions so you may as well sign up. For this tutorial, we'll be using the registered version of Geovic on a computer. Once you've registered and signed in, Geovic opens up like this. This screen shows a basic map of Victoria here in the middle, with a few data layers automatically displayed, which we can see over here on the left-hand side. There are a series of tools and buttons located to the top of the map, and these include your zoom buttons, pan tool for moving the map around, three buttons which are basically reset back and forward, identify, and a whole lot more. We're going to look at a few of these a bit closer further on in the video. And there's also a quick search box on the top right, where you can search and zoom in on specific locations. So we're going to start by zooming in on an area. Let's take a look at Maryborough. So I'll type it in here and choose the town from the drop down, what's it? And now we're at Maryborough. But we're a bit too close. I find it useful to switch from the zoom tool, which is automatically selected when you open Geovic, to the pan tool, which is this little hand icon above the main map, so that I can click and drag with the mouse to move around, while just using the scrolling mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the map. So here we have Maryborough and surrounding areas displayed on the map, and the map is currently only showing the basic data layers of towns and roads. Now the brilliant thing about Geovic is that you can build your own map by adding and removing the data layers that you need. The Layers tool is located on the left-hand side of the screen, and you can add or remove data layers using the green plus button and the red X button. You can also change the order of layers, which changes the orders they're displayed over each other on the map using the green up and down arrows. And the transparency of each layer can be adjusted using the slider at the bottom. Now this is handy when you've got lots of layers active on your map because it can get very crowded. We are going to start by adding a few useful layers to our map. Click on the green plus button, which will open up this box. The first layers we're going to add to the map are under the section Topography. If we click on this, it will display more options. Select Contours, as well as Watercourses and Lakes, by clicking the checkboxes. Hit Apply, and the map will now display Watercourses and Contours. I like to add these layers because it gives you a better idea of the layout of the land at the surface but I'm going to adjust the transparency of these layers using this slider because the map is looking a bit busy right off the bat and we've still got plenty of stuff to add to it. Now we're going to add another layer. So you want to click on this guy right here in the layers tool again and under the section minerals, select leads and workings detail by clicking the checkbox. Hit apply and this will display data for shallow workings, shallow leads and deep leads. And now things are starting to look weird. To understand what you're looking at on the map at any time, you can switch to the Legend tab, which is beside Layers to the left of the main map. By looking at this legend, we can see that the shallow workings are displayed in red, shallow leads are displayed in purple, and deep leads are displayed in green. 
So what are these shallow workings and leads? You may notice that the layout of these is awfully similar to the layout of the watercourses displayed on the map. That's because they are indeed watercourses, but ancient ones. A lead is an ancient watercourse or riverbed which has been buried over time by lava flows or by deposition of newer layers of sand and gravel. These ancient riverbeds were often extremely rich in gold. The old time miners would trace these ancient watercourses from areas where they're quite shallow and easy to find, usually around the headwaters, and then they followed the ancient riverbed as it ran deeper underground, where they then became classed as shallow leads and deep leads. Now for prospectors, the main areas you'll want to focus on are the areas of shallow workings. These areas were worked by the old timers because they were rich in gold and the gold wasn't very deep. Any areas in or around the old shallow workings marked on Geovic, where you find the ground is indeed quite shallow, are good places to check out with your detector. Some shallow workings were mined by paddocking or surfacing, where miners stripped large areas of shallow gold rich ground down to the bedrock and processed all the earth they removed using equipment such as tubs, cradles, puddling machines and sluices. These are great areas for detecting around. I made a page about surfacing a while back which you might find useful. I'll add a link to that in the description below. Shallow working shown on Geovic can often still be too deep for detectors. If the old timers were digging shafts to reach the gold bearing layer, you may have luck detecting their old muller keeps beside their shafts. This is the earth they pulled out of the ground to reach the gold bearing wash at the bottom, and as they got closer to the bottom, some of the gold bearing layer was sometimes chucked up into the mullock by accident. As for the leads, they are classed as leads because they're buried. Miners had to sink deep shafts to get to the ancient riverbed below. But keep in mind there could also be more recent gold deposits closer to the surface in those areas. They found plenty of gold around the shallow surface workings of Ballarat before they realised the unfathomable riches which lay waiting in the now famous deep leads below. Not all gold lies trapped in riverbeds. Sometimes it gets stuck in other places, such as down a hillside beneath an exposed gold-bearing quartz reef. Reefs are not all gold-bearing, but some of them sure are. You should keep in mind though, that many of the reefs you'll see on Geovic are located deep underground and were reached by large mining companies with substantial equipment. But it's still pretty nifty to see where these reefs are. So to add reefs to your map, click the green plus button to add another layer. And this time we're going to go Geology, Interpretations, Statewide Data 1990 to 2006, Geology 100K, and then tick the checkbox for Geological Lines and Faults 100K. So with the new layer added, our map now looks like this. These little yellow guys are quartz veins, or reefs. You'll find that not all reefs are mapped out in Geovic. You can come across lots of exposed reefs out in the bush which are not marked on this map. Remember, you can switch over to the Legend tab at any time to check out what any other geological features are that are showing on your map. You can then add some more detail by adding another couple of layers. Mines and Mineral Occurrences and Historical Mining Activity, which you'll find under the Minerals category. This adds the names of some mining companies, operations and mineral occurrences to our map. You can get more information on things using the Identify icon which is this blue info circle with a drop down arrow beside it. Select this tool and click the drop down arrow. You want to make sure that visible layers is selected, otherwise it's only going to show you information about whichever layer is currently active. Once you have selected this tool, click and drag over an item or object on the map that you want more information about. It will then bring up a box containing a table of available information about the item or object you've highlighted. For mining companies, Sometimes some very cool details are available such as mine depth, type, production amounts, host type and more. Some mines will also state how accurate their location is on the map. For example, it might say that they are plus or minus 30 meters, meaning that the location is accurate to within 30 meters. Now all of this is great stuff, but where are you actually allowed to prospect for gold? Well, with the miners right, prospecting is allowed in most state forests, many reserves, and on private property with the landowner's permission. Prospecting is also permitted on Crown land, except for prohibited Crown land, and permitted areas in certain parks under the National Parks Act. I've added a few links in the description for more information regarding land access rules for gold prospectors. Now, great news for prospectors, you can add layers to your map in Geovic which shows all the Crown land and public reserves. 
Click on the green plus button to add more layers and you will find these. Under Land Status and Boundaries, select Crown Land. And then from here, you're also going to go into Public Land and select Public Land Management Detail. So now we can see all the different types of public land on our map. Very handy. Here are some other layers you might find useful or interesting. Have a play around with them to find which ones suit what you're working on. There are lots of nifty little features within GeoVic which can make your research easier. These are located in the row of icons above the map area. Some handy tools are Google Maps, which opens Google Maps in a new browser page and takes you to the current location. Markup and Redline, which allows you to add your own notes, pins and coordinates on the map. Coordinate Display, which shows coordinates in various formats of wherever your mouse cursor is. Zoom to Map Coordinate, which lets you enter a set of coordinates and it will zoom to that location on the map. Measurement Tools, with a drop-down arrow with several features. This allows you to make detailed measurements on the map. Well, that's all for now. I hope that this quick tutorial has helped a few people to get started using GeoVic.